So it's one o'clock. Welcome to the coffee lectures from the Chemistry Biology Pharmacy Information Center. Uh, my name is Yoji Sadolins, and today I would like to present you the literature database Dimensions. Dimensions is one of my most favorite databases, I have to say, um, because it's really different from Scopus and Web of Science. And here on that slide, I would like to um, list a couple of reasons why I find it so different. And one of the most important reasons is that they include all relevant research. They don't um, <clears throat> just include articles that are published in um, peer-reviewed journals. Um, so, um, and the reason for that is that they want to avoid what they call editorial discrimination. So it's in the hands of a reader to decide if a article is good or bad. Then the other thing is it's not an ordinary database. It's really, an, I would say, ecosystem um, in which uh, also content types such as grants, patents, data sets, and clinical trials are uh, included and uh, linked with articles. So you can, you can search for many, many different things in um, dimensions, not just for articles. Then the third very, very important thing is that they are actually doing full text indexing. And uh, in 2023, they had full text indexing of over 19 million publications and 150 million patents done. And for that reasons, uh, with dimensions, you can do a full text search. Uh, so you don't only search in keywords and abstract, but you can search in full text, as I will show you in a moment. Um, next to that, you can do a similar document search. So you can type in a text and search for similar documents. And you can search in metadata as well. So you can search, for example, in acknowledgments. You can search in, in some other metadata fields in, of articles and so on. Also mesh terms, if you like. So. Um, then, um, as every database also dimensions, have many filters to filter down the results. And those search filters in dimensions depend on the content type. So if you are looking into the patents, these search filters will be different than if you'll be looking in clinical trials and so on. So I'm going to show you that too. And next to, um, next to the normal search filters, they have on the right-hand side, as you will see, a whole uh, bunch of different viewers with which you can do um, visual analysis of results. Now, what is important to know is that Dimensions also exist as a free version, um, but with the free version, you can only look at the data sets and publications and citations, but not at uh, grants and policy documents and patents and so on. Now at ETH, we are lucky that um, we have the uh, subscription version available. It's called Dimensions Analytics. And this is actually what I'm going to present you today. So from here on, I'm going to do a live demo. Of Dimensions. I'm going to open it here, try to make it as big as possible. I hope you can all see that well. Right, um, so I prepared an example already, and that is a search uh, for articles and other types of um, data on the use of artificial intelligence or AI in drug design. So as you can see up here, you have as in all the other literature databases, the possibility to put in your query. I use the uh, operators, I use uh, the double quotes to search exactly for those phrases, and then, I have the possibility to, de to decide, do I search in full data, including full text, or do I do a standard search just in title and abstract? Here on that side, I can then decide for keyword search, which is what I'm doing now. And then there's the option similar documents and advanced search, which I'm going to show you later. So let's search with this um, query in full data now. And what you see, I got uh, 84, almost 85,000 publications. 71 data sets, 100, around 150 grants, 25,000 patents, um, one clinical trial, and 168 policy documents. So I would like to quickly go through that with you. So here are the results. For each result, like in other databases, you can look at citations, health metrics, uh, you can get the PDF. And what uh, Dimensions now also added is the summarized field, which is, which is an AI generated field. Um, about um, the article with some key highlights. 
and top keywords. So every article, every pattern has now this, which is AI generated, it's a new feature. Now on the left-hand side, you then have filters. And for those who are into, who know Scopus and Web of Science, I think some of the filters will already be very familiar, like document type publisher and so on. But here there's more. So you can, for example, <clears throat> not only look at researchers in this field, um, but you can also look at funders. Um, I think some other databases have that too. You can look at country of funders. You can look at uh, locations very in detail of research organizations. You can, for example, with open uh, access, see uh, what is published open access and uh, how many articles not. And then there are groups up here, uh, like funder groups, research organization groups. So there's, there's, there are some additional filters that you wouldn't find in every um, literature database. And in particular, those filters change then when we go to other types of, of documents. Now, but before showing you that, I would like to now maybe um, to limit down the results set a little bit, I'm gonna focus on Professor Gisbert Schneider from DICHUB. Uh, who's one of the most important researchers in this field, as you can see. So I selected him and I'll say, I'm gonna say limit two. And with that, I would like to present you how this looks now in the results um, set. Uh, we have now 87 publications from Professor Gisbert Schneider on that topic. Um, uh, now they are sorted by relevance, but as you may know, he published some really nice papers on that topic now in 24. So I'm gonna um, sort by uh, publication date and we have here then the, his two new papers um, in uh, nature uh, communications and nature machine intelligence. Now, if you would like to know more about the paper, you just click on the title uh, like in every other database and then the details open. Uh, but what I think that's pretty obvious. Now, what is interesting here, you now see his data sets and grants just in this, in this field. But if you would like to see his complete profile that is also available in dimensions, similar as in Scopus. So you can click on his name and then you see um, how he was performing over the years. You can look at uh, just, for example, active grants, his patents, his data sets that he has uh, uploaded somewhere and publications. And then if you scroll down, um, you see his network, all his publications, grants, um, when they were granted for how much money, um, then yeah, the data sets and then the patents. So this is a so-called uh, profile of a person, which is available also in dimensions. Now I will move away from Gisbert Schneider. Um, so I will remove that filter and stay with the big publication set to show you um, the, the other fields. So dimensions includes data sets, as I mentioned. Now data sets mainly come from um, publications. So nowadays, if you publish something, you need to have the data available and uh, dimensions actually indexes that from many repositories. I'm not gonna go in details. A nice um, result are the grants. So now here you see 147 grants on this topic. And if you got to get uh, into details, you can then basically filter based on, let's say, active year um, or starting year or on the group, uh, which funder groups have, um, have contributed to that. You can look, for example, at uh, finished grants in that field, ongoing grants only if you want. Um, and then again, researchers, funders, uh, country of funders and so on. And then um, if you are curious, I mean, here we have now grants listed by starting date. So these are the new grants in that field. But if you, if you would like to see, for example, um, the grants sorted by funding amount, that is also possible. And then you get some really high numbers um, for big, big grants that support uh, certain facilities and so on. And now this one is now already finished, but this one is still going on. So with that, you can basically also see um, where there's funding for certain fields uh, in the world. I think that's important once you're deciding on your next career steps. So this is the grant um, option, which we have available at ETH. And then it's the patents. Now, if you look into the patents, um, now they are sorted by file date. Um, and here on the left-hand side, filters are again different now. You can, for example, look at the status of a patent and see 
which patents have expired, which have ceased, which have been withdrawn. So you can filter based on all that. You can filter based on assignees. So it's really, really, um, uh, there are really many options to, to, to look, look into the results. And I didn't mention all the results you can then save or export if you're logged in. Um, and for a login, you just need to um, go up here and log in with your ETH credentials if you're at ETH. You don't need to register or whatever. You just put your ETH email address and then you will be able to use um, the dimensions analytics. Then we have clinical trials. Clinical trials, now we have only one case. Um, and here again, you can see filters are different. We have, we have, you can see in which phase the trial is. If there would be more, you could filter by, based on that. Um, when it was active and so on. And by clicking on that, you get the details of a clinical trial. Um, yeah, so I, now I have to really hurry. Uh, policy documents is also something what you find in uh, Dimensions and uh, not in Scopus and Web of, Web of Science. So these are now all kinds of policy documents based on, the, on my search criteria. Um, with that, I will now change a little bit. Um, so now I, view, I was searching documents in full data and how to make it um, the set slightly smaller, I will search just in title and abstract with those keywords. So that's a standard search that Scopus and Web of Science do. And I'm gonna do it just for the sake of making the set slightly smaller. And you see, if I search only in title and abstract, then I get down to 1,164 publications. So the set is now much, much smaller. And I did that. Um, uh, I'm going to go back to documents, to publications. Um, I did that uh, because I would like to quickly show you now the analytical views on that side. So for each of those categories that I was showing you so far, you can uh, go and analyze uh, with analytics here. And here there are really, really many possibilities. So for example, if I want to look into research categories related to my search, I can click, for example, on a network. And using the VOS viewer, which is one of our coffee lectures too, you'll get, uh, for example, disciplines uh, that are uh, involved in this, uh, in this kind of publications. And then you can, I'm sorry, you can zoom in and zoom out and analyze that um, in detail. You can also do bar charts and so on. Um, then, for example, overview is about how this field has been developing. Also here you can build a network um, if you like and look into it and see through which fields um, there are connections uh, when you look at those papers and you can uh, limit on the number of concepts you put into the picture if you find it too busy. Then you can look, for example, open access timeline. Uh, what is nice to see is that there are more and more papers are being published open access in that field. Uh, you can look at researchers. You can, for example, make a heat map of researchers and see these are now the, the most uh, important researchers in the field. And you can now, now they are, um, the heat map is against the uh, funders, but you can say, yeah, I actually want to see fields of research here and, and then compare them. Source titles is one option which is nice to see if you don't know where to publish. So you can maybe make a timeline to see which journals are most important um, for this field. And interestingly, um, this is actually Chem Archive and this is Archive. So there are really many preprints there, but uh, Journal of Chemical Information and Modeling is also a very important um, journal for this kind of um, research. Then you can do something similar with publishers or funders if you want. So you can have a look which funders fund most uh, of research and it's actually a natural uh, science foundation of china that is the most prominent funder at the moment and the same for research organization the last thing i would like to show you is places if you would like to see where in the world that this kind of research is done you can go to geomap and then you have the whole world and yeah america is very important china is very important india is very important and here in Europe, one can also look then into details if I zoom in. I was very disappointed when I realized that I can't focus on Europe, but I can focus on US, Canada, and Australia. <laughs> so if I want to focus on Europe, I need to zoom in and then have a look at uh, what's happening here. Yeah. So um, that's also possible. And then at the end, there's an option to compare organizations based on different criteria. I'm not going to go into that at the moment. Uh, by default, Oxford and Cambridge are compared 
based on fields of research, but one could uh, compare based on other units as well. So I'm now um, actually uh, over my time already. One could search organizations as well. I showed you only documents. And here I was doing a keyword search so far. If you would do a similar document search, I could just copy paste an abstract here. And then these, uh, the dimensions would find me documents with similar uh, content. That is very nice. And advanced search is also something which is very nice. And here is what I mentioned in the beginning. You can search, for example, in acknowledgement. So if you would like to see how often your name has been um, acknowledged in the literature, I'm just going to put myself now here. You can just start add and do a search. And then um, in documents, have to close analytical views. Well, now it says it was never, which is not true, um, but uh, that should work actually. Uh, maybe I did something wrong here. You could you could do mesh terms, for example, if you would like. If you're interested in a port, I think that's a mesh term. Um, well, uh, then you just add it with end, let's say, and then uh, like that you could do a search. Now this does not exist that I know. Uh, so with that, I definitely need to stop now. Um, I'm going to go back to my uh, slides. This is the coffee lecture card. The coffee lecture card is over there, but also uh, a link is in the chat so you can uh, download it. If you would like to do more with dimensions, let me know. Um, I really, really like the database. And there's also dimensions API that exists actually. Um, but um, for that, I think only a limited number of um, accesses are there at the ETH Zurich, and one needs to contact the ETH library if one wants to do more with the Dimensions API. That was the last coffee lecture of this series. So I thank you very much for uh, joining us again and again. Uh, thank you for your attention today, and I'm open for questions. Thank you.